I'm going to teach uh, some legs today. Now, how many guys, just, just so you, I have an idea, feel comfortable, honestly, be honest, feel comfortable showing legs? Just show of hands. Thank God, not a lot. Honestly, I don't show a lot of legs in college because I find that for every point we get, we give up about four. And, and I st but I started showing these kinds of legs uh, after wrestling a lot of freestyle. And, the and I, I do it because it's a safe way to teach legs. And so I teach a lot of high school coaches uh, when I, when I, and, and, heck, junior high coaches. My little 10-year-old throws these kinds of legs because it's the only kind of legs I let him th throw because it doesn't get him in trouble. And we're going to start off, go ahead and belly down. I'm going to start off just from a guy, assuming we have him broken down flat, or we have him in this position, all right? What I want to do with these legs is I'm going to attack his head like crazy because I'm up here fighting this guy, and if you watch our team wrestle, we're not, I, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say we're not, uh, we're not Iowa tough on top of Cornell and something we're working on, but one thing we are real good at is this one particular move. And so we'll attack the guy up here, let him think he's, we're attacking his upper body. The whole time, my whole, my whole idea is I'm snaking my inside leg down, laces to laces. So just the key word so you can remember it is I take my, my laces and I slide it down to his laces. Now, if he knows I'm going to do a leg curl, he's going to be able to stop me. All right, but if, if, so, so if I'm down here and I start going down this way, it, it's really hard to do that kind of bow and arrow. But if I'm attacking his head, quite often, sometimes, I mean, down here, you know, you'll see the leg will sometimes just, just kind of come up. But if he, and if he doesn't feel it, all right, he doesn't feel it, he's relaxed, curl, right there. So that's how I get into this move, right there, just like a bow and arrow. You have to attack the head just as a diversion. So I'm attacking the head, attacking the head, laces to laces. Do the leg curl, and I catch it. Now, I'm not going to do a bow and arrow because what happens when I, when I hold on to that leg too long, even in college and especially in high school, the second you start doing this kind of stuff, the ref blows a whistle. At least they do in New York. In Iowa, they probably let you break the guy in two. All right, they're a little, little made of sterner stuff out here. In New York, you start doing this, moms scream and, the, and it's all over. All right, here. So, I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to plant it in the mat. And the reason I do that is because if I don't, Bryce, I'm just going to let you, and I, and, I try to take my, and I try to lift him and drive him forward so I can get the leg in, Bryce just squirrels forward, all right, and I can't get it in. All right. So I'm going to plant my hand right there on the mat after I do a leg curl, plant it. And I'm going to take my inside toe and I'm going to put it in high in the thigh, as high as I can on the thigh, and I'm going to drive my toes in deep right there. And I figure for it. Now, conventional legs, come up a little bit, come on up a little bit. When you throw a conventional leg, when a guy hips down, right, now my hips, my hips on the mat and I'm in trouble. And if you guys watched uh, my 25 pounder, Troy Nickerson, uh, he wrestled arguably one of the best guys in the country throwing legs. I mean, you, if you had to say, hey, who's the best guy, who's the toughest guy on the top in the country? guy named Simmons. He's one of the best guys in the country. Well, if that's the best guy in the country and he gets reversed and loses a national title or a chance at a national title by a true freshman, obviously there's something wrong with the technique. And that's why I don't like to throw a lot of conventional legs. I just feel it gives a, a great man on bottom, someone who's determined to score, is going to reverse you or is going to get out. At least that's my philosophy. And when you throw this inside leg, especially in high school, junior high, he hips down, boom. Unless I'm a great athlete, it's going to be a 50-50 scenario, and I've got a great chance of being reversed right here. All right, so that's your conventional legs. In opposite leg, or inside leg, however you want to call it, I'm going to drive with my toes. I plant the hand. So if he, so go ahead and try to go forward. You can't really go forward. Drive on my toes, drive on my toes, and I'm going to take my heel and I actually turn my heel towards the wall to away from my, actually my toe should be pointing away or toward the sky. If it's pointing toward the sky, you're probably in pretty good shape. And here, I just scoop it. Figure four. Now, turn your hip down. All right? You can't. It's, it's physically impossible if I turn, turn towards the arm view. Keep turning, keep turning. All right? I've got a base. I've got a post right here. 
so he can't turn the hip down. Now, I don't want it down by his knee, because that, that gives him too much wiggle room. If he comes forward a little bit, the knee pops out, and that's no good. So I want to get this toe, this, this heel, as high as I can in his thigh. It's got to be very, very high, right there. Go ahead and turn your hip down. Simply can't do it. If I lose the lock and he turns his hip down, the worst case scenario, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, is he gets out. And so this is, this is what I teach our kids who come in from high school to college. I teach them the opposite leg. Because even if you don't know an opposite leg, you can learn it and you won't get any, in any trouble. And we had three, at least three turns with this particular move at nationals with guys who never threw legs before. So it's, it's a nice, easy way to kind of get into it. Right? So, but what do you do when you get into this? Right. Leg curl, drive on the toe, drive on the toe, drive, drive, drive. If you don't drive on the toe, if you just try to take this and then roll into it, it's going to be a real low. It's going to be down at the bottom of his knee. That's why you drive on the toe. Drive, bo, 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 there. And literally take your leg and smack it up against his butt. If you don't smack it up against the butt, you're going to end up here. He's going to wiggle a little bit forward, and you're going to lose it. So drive, 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 drive. Hook, lock, and I've got a good, tight pressure. You see, I've already got his hip, his far hip down, and that's going to let me turn him. Now, I learned this move the hard way. I actually learned this move watching old tapes of myself getting cranked by Dave Schultz, because he was fantastic with this. Unfortunately, I was this, this guy, and it was a lot of pain. Now, I had a great flex, deal of flexibility, so I just took it. I lost a couple ligament uh, discs back here, but I took it. All right? But my first turn from this position, and you can hold on to the keep the leg if you want or you can let go it doesn't really matter the, what we're going to do is i'm going to just cross face him over i'm going to arch on the toe see i hop on the toe and i'm going to take his face take his face and i'm going to keep height the whole time now we got in a little bit of trouble this year because we were taking the throat and we were choking him out all right and we got in a little bit of trouble and uh so you got to be careful with that However, you can take his face, and you can cross face, and you can keep height. Now, if, you're gonna, if your guys are going to get in trouble, you're going to arch the hips, take the head. What you don't want to do is let your far hip hit the mat. Now Bryce can just go ahead and turn towards me. Far there. Right there. You can turn out. You want to keep height at all times. This is height. That's why I let go of the leg. If I, let go, if I don't let go of the leg, if I hold the leg and I come down here, a real flexible guy. Now, it ha looks like I have great control here. A real flexible guy, even though he, I have the leg. Go ahead and turn like crazy. I don't know how flexible you are. Keep turning toward me. Turn toward me. Turn me. There. There. He can still squ squirrel his way out of there. All right. Going back a little bit. So what we're going to do. When I arch, arch, height, height, rip the head, bring the head, try to stuff the head under, right there. Now I'm getting my points. One, two, three, four, five. Now if he turns into me fast, I keep my height, go ahead, turn hard. I let go of the figure four, and I go to double grapes. Back it down again. Right. Right. Height, ripping across. If he, comes, if he tries to come turn into me, re release the figure four. Turn, keep turning so I can go over. Right there, right there. There's your double grapes, right? So that's, that's why you've got to keep the height with your far leg. Come back down again. OK. Any, any questions on that at all? Yes? You bet. Uh, turn a little bit this way so you can see it better. All right. Taking the face, taking the face. All right, see, I'm, keep, I'm keeping the height here. As he tries to turn into me hard, release, figure, double grape. Now notice what I'm doing with this inside leg. I'm really keeping it high here. I don't want to let it down, because now leg's out. Here, height. Turn, turn again. Go ahead, turn away. All right, all right. Turn. He turns, boom. Now what we do to learn that little technique, because that's actually kind of a hard technique for, for kids to, they got to feel it. I feel it pretty quickly. 
So we do a little drill where we do the whole move and we rip his face, rip his face, fight me a little, turn down, turn down, turn down, turn, other way, other way. Right? You really want to learn to arch, arch, fall over. Look what I'm doing. I'm taking my chest, and this is going to be real important when we get into the next turn where I do a power half. I want to get my body as far over his shoulders as possible on this particular technique. If I'm back down here, there's no pressure. So I want to basically extend myself as far as possible up here. And with a conventional leg, where I'm draping and around. Now I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I've got a little more leg in this, in, in his, on, com, uh, committed. So I can't get as far out here. But watch what happens when I change the other leg. Look how much farther I am. And Bryce will tell you, I've got a lot more power here, don't I Bryce? Yeah. Than here. Can you feel the difference? Yeah. Much more pressure the higher, the higher you get that leg. Right. So, I'm rip, taking the head. And here's the drill. Just, I just do it like 10 times. Ready? Turn in fast. Boom. Catch. Turn back. Right. Turn, turn it. Boom. Catch. And you guys will get the feel then real pretty quickly. Then what the guys will do is they'll try to turn out. They'll, they'll come. You'll, they'll feel it come. They'll turn in. Boom. Turn that back hard. Boom. Right. Turn back again. Boom. Because right. they're not going to just go to their back and lie there, hopefully, unless they're wrestling against them. Come on, back down. All right, back belly down. So that's what if you can just if you can just take the head, and we'll get that quite often late in the match. Guys get tired, and you'll get them two or three times once they once they fatigue. When you get this opposite leg, guys will just roll right over for you. If it's not so easy, drive and drive, drive and drive. Quite often, he's got a post. Just Bryce did a great job. He didn't even feel it. He just naturally posts to this post this arm. A lot of times they'll post the arm out. So I can't, you want to fight it hard, I won't, I won't hurt you. All right, I can't do it, just like that. All right, you can't take it over that arm. The cross face won't work. So what I'll do, I'm going to take that arm and I'm going to bar arm it. I'm going to fall over as far as I can, right here, and bring it back. And I keep the head. I pull him into my hip. I don't try to take him over the arm. I pull him into my hip, post, post, right there, and get my points. Now that, Bryce, that's tight, isn't it? You can't try to turn out, turn. All right, it's really, really tight. And that's, that's a real normal, a very natural reaction when you're taking the head. If he puts the arm out and keeps the body flat, which he, if he, if he, if he puts, keep the body flat, and then right there, I can still take him over that. So what, I, mean, I can still take him over if he doesn't get some height. So what he does is Bryce is a good wrestler, he takes that arm out there. Now he's got a little height to fight me a little bit, he can fight me. So what I'm gonna do, is, is I'm going to try to get my body as far over as possible. Now, once again, if I'm back down here, fight me, Bryce, it's going to be hard to take that arm. So I'm going to jump high as I can, and I'll actually, literally, I'll just, I'll just scoop it right there. Bar arm, and I tighten that leg up as high or hard as I can, because I don't want his hips to be able to move when I pull him back. He can stop me by posting this way if I try to bring him towards his arm but try to stop me bringing it into, into my hips. Right. Very simple. Right. And here I just, I take the head to pull him in to get my back points. One, two, three, four, five. Comes back down again. Sometimes, he's really tight and I can't get it. Reach out, I'll grab the fingers. And here it's a, it's a little bit more complicated. Grab the fingers, I post, stuff it. bring him into, into my, but Bryce will tell you, he can't go across my body. I'm going to try to go across my body. See how tight that is? It's really, really tight. Let's turn it around, do the other leg, because the mind's getting tired. Right. Right. Drive, 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 lock, right. take him, this time he posts hard, there. If I don't feel like I can come across, I just scoop it. It's my head. Pull him back. Easier said than done. You know, he's going to fight you, but what happens, especially in college, and I'm getting riding time the whole time, if I want to from here, if he posts out with the other arm so I can't bring you back, boom, there's my double bar. All right. 
so you can adjust off it. But the key is you're controlling his hip so much, you've already got your hip, his hip locked down, now he's really in a desperation move. And everything, our whole philosophy with riding legs, if my, whether it's an inside leg or a crab ride, is if you're making the man adjust to you, he can't adjust, he can't, he's not going to be thinking about reversals, he's going he's to be thinking more of just surviving. Any questions on that last one, that bar arm? I used this, and, uh, and when I was competing, as I was getting older in freestyle, I started shooting less and turning more. And I learned that a two-point turn is worth two takedowns. Well, now I coach at Cornell, I didn't go to Cornell, but even I could figure that out. All right, I think that, that math works out pretty nicely. And so I started doing a lot, a lot more on top. So for those of you guys who teach a lot of freestyle, this was my, this was my go-to. My, my trapped arm gut. Same, same move. Reach back, grab it, drive, 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 drive. And this was in freestyle, right there. Every time the guy was going to post out strong, dog paw me, dog paw, just like a good freestyle, good freestyle technique, right there. And he's strong, and these guys internationally were so powerful, you just couldn't turn them. So, once again, I scoop it right here. This time, instead of going to my bar arm, I just go to my trapped arm. There. There's my trapped arm. I always take him towards the arm that he's posting with. I don't like, because I, I, I don't like going towards this arm. I just keep bringing him towards my hip. Right. And my last year I wrestled, uh, I scored, I think, every single one of my point, points with that move. It was pretty bad. I was a little slow, but gosh, could I turn on top? And, and that was, that's all I would do. Get the guy put down, fight him up here, like, drive, 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 drive. Let me do it the other side, because I'm much better on this side. Drive, 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 drive. Take him over, take him over. Right, there it is. Adjust, adjust. Slide, and then you can go, from here you can go either way. And once you get a trapped arm gut, the match should be over. Unlimited turns, hold them one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, or one, two, whatever you want. Just a great combination. So it works well in freestyle. It works really, really well collegiately, and it's very, very safe. Anybody, everybody see that adjustment on the, on the gut wrench? I'm sure, not sure how quickly I went over that. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, last turn I want to get on here, do on this, is uh, it's kind of a variation of my power half, and uh, hopefully most of you guys probably know some kind of power half from here. But you can do everything you do from a conventional leg in terms of turns, you can do from the opposite leg. And that's why I like it so much, because all the guys who think they know legs can adapt to this very, very quickly. So once again, drive, 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 drive. This time, that puts his hands out this way, all right? So far, I can't, he knows, and, and I actually, my guys started doing this to me. They started grabbing their own hands, trying to do this kind of stuff, and so I couldn't, I couldn't pull it back. It was quite good. I was impressed. I thought, man, that's, that's why I've started doing that. Way. That's by the way, that's the defense to this right there. He grabbed the hands. So I got to break those hands somehow. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to jack them out right there. Now, once I get to that position, I put all my weight on that hand, and I weight it like crazy. I don't want him to bring it back down here. I want to keep it extended because in lifting weights, you know you're much weaker when you get the arm away from the body. So I've got his arm away from the body. I put all my weight on there, scoop the other hand in, and lock it on the wrist. Now I can turn Bryce just with this move. Without the leg, I can turn him here because I've got the arm so isolated. But I'm going to keep that leg in. I'm going to bring this arm up on the head right there. You feel that, Bryce, can't you? Yeah. All right, and, I, I, and it doesn't matter how strong this guy is when you have the arm extended here. Now, if he's in here, fight me, Bryce. I mean, I can more, I could probably horse you because I'm stronger than. But it, it's a lot harder. Fight me hard. Oh, there we go. There we go. Thank you, Bryce. Extended it for me. Thank you, sir. So if you, but you, you jump, you jump the yeah. techniques on me. If it's in tight, what I want to do is I want to lock that out, and I don't try to just pull it over. A lot of are my guys. Doesn't matter how many times I teach them, they still try to do this, and it's hard. 
So what I want to do first is extend it. Now I can bring it back very easily. Now from here, you're going to get called potentially dangerous every single time, I can almost guarantee you, especially if, it, if he has his arm out. Put your arm out right there. So from here, I let the leg slip, and I run it like a conventional half. And it's really, really hard. It doesn't look like it should be that easy, but you're, it's got to be borderline illegal. But I haven't been called, or guys have not been called on it, so we'll just let it go. Right? So one more time. Yeah, we're going to turn this way. Right? So lock it in, nice and tight. So again, I'm overextended. Lock it, extend it. So that's the lock. I come on top and over. And it's really a very simple, it's like a pro crowbar, a pry here. And I could, I could, if I wanted to, if I was an ultimate fighter, I would try to, I would try to break his shoulder off here. But Bryce would get really upset. I get sued, right right here. So, right there's my lock, like a butterfly lock. Bring it on his head. And from here, actually from here, usually what I do, God forbid, but I gotta, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna admit, I slip opposite leg here, I slip the other leg in. All right, and then I can bring the other leg out. But from here, I'm not gonna get reversed, he's not gonna get his hip down. And here, I just take him over very slowly until I get to where I know he's going, then I can pop it out. Everybody see that? Any questions about that? So I do a, I do a butterfly, butterfly lock, and I change, just change the leg. Any questions on that? No? Okay. Little 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 ways we do just to to break the guy down. I just hook. Right, we hook the back leg and stall like crazy. It's amazing how much they do not call, any, call us on this anymore. And it's the same kind of leg, leg turn or leg curl right here. And just little drills we do. All I do is a leg, I, we hook and leg curl. Right? And I try to get our guys to break the man down. So this is, tomorrow I'm going to do a lot of drills because when I go to coaches clinics and I go to a lot of them, I, I actually prefer watching high school coaches. I'm not trying to stroke you guys. I actually like watching high school coaches because they tend to, they try to, they know how to break things down and it's harder to teach a high school kid than a college kid. I get a five time state champion, I throw him on the mat and I get credit for it. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff. All right. Uh, high school coaches, you have to do drills over and over again. So I pick up a lot of my drills from high school coaches. And so tomorrow I'm going to do all the drills that we do to teach position, to teach defense. But this is a little drill we do in order to, uh, just try to let the guy, try to learn to, one, to break some time off the mat, two, to, to try to break him down. And all I'm going to learn to do is just to do a leg curl. Right there. Right. right. Up again. Up again. Right. Sorry, leg curl. I got to pinch that leg, and I got to take him down without anything but legs. Back up. Right. Go. Right. right. It's, a, it's a nice little drill. And you learn that you can actually, you got to learn how to drive with your back leg, use your hips, and it's not easy. All right, other leg. Ready, go. All right. And from here, there it is. Reach back, grab it, hook, and there's our leg. So that's just an aside. Come on back out here and go, Bryce. Sorry about that. I'm wearing you out, but <laughs> wait till the next drill. Uh, so once again, here's my little drill. I just hook, we start from here, and then he's not allowed to stand up. If, well, if he stands up, I'm penalized, all right? So I gotta go from the whistle, go. All right. Now, I'm pretty good at this because I've done it before, he's never done it before, and I've got 50 pounds on him. So I'm really good. But it gets pretty tough. Go, drive, drive. Right, there it is, hook. And just, the reason we do that drill is to try to get the people, our guys to start thinking immediately, grabbing the bad ankle, back, back ankle and driving over. And what I found now is your kids, back belly down, your kids will be here, they'll be in between. This guy, will, he'll start to try to come up, he'll, he'll reach, he'll, he'll bend his leg up on his own. Just like that, and he'll, oh, there it is. Boom, boom, boom. So, real simple drill uh, for your kids. And that's about it on my, on my opposite leg, and unless you guys have any questions. No? Oh, yes, sir. How do you put that leg 
boy, tomorrow they're going on getting out of legs. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to answer that question. Uh, how, do, how do you clear a leg from inside leg? I've got this one? Okay, get on me, do that. A couple little tricks I, I, I do. Yeah, right there, all right? I actually, I like it when a guy hooks me here. There's two, two things that I do. One, I put all my weight back on this leg right here. And all I'm gonna do is push my body back into him and I'm gonna try to punch him with this hand. Here. Right there. Right. Now, if he gets my leg up in the air, right there, now I can't do that, it's very hard. So as soon as he, as soon as I feel him stepping over my leg, boom, I gotta get the weight on it. Now I've got him trapped. Let him try to get out of there. It's very hard, right there, right there. And he can't cradle me here. He doesn't have that cradle because I've got my leg bent together. And all I'm gonna do is pop. All right, let's get on the other side. This one. So I'm putting my leg back right there. And I'm gonna turn into him, put all the weight back, boom. Now from here, it's a dog fight. Right. Hopefully I'm gonna win it. And that one, you can get real tricky with that if you want to. Get on there again. You can actually, if, he's, if you want to, you can reach across opposite hand. You don't wanna reach same side hand. You can reach opposite, opposite hand so we can't bail out of there. Here, kind of pull him in a little bit also. From here, you can switch off. Right there. Um, get back on there again. We'll do it again. Right. If, he's, if he's really tight waisting you here, right there. Because right. he's really overcommitted if he has a tight waist. And a lot of guys will tight waist the heck out of you and just try to stall there. Right there. Now, I don't let the, I don't let the foot come off the mat. If the foot comes off the mat, get back on there. Right. If I do this, he can, he can, there, see, and that's no good. So I've got to stick that leg as if it's in glue. There, you're stuck, right? Boom. Right there. All right, the other one I do is real basic. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this hip to the mat. Slow motion. Can't do it slow motion, it's gotta be fast, get on me. All right. I take that hip. So as soon as I turn that hip down, I've gotta get back in my base or else he's just gonna, go ahead and do it to me. Do you know how to do this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, clear this hip. You're turning the hip down, boom, right there. You gotta be careful about that. So it's gotta be, extremely fast. So the second he gets that in there, get on there. So I feel, and I'm out. So it's this motion. Turn the hip down. Imagine, once, imagine, visualize it's a, it's a key. All right? I got a, my, right there, you can see, I can't pull it out, can't pull it out. So I turn the key, slide it down, and come back to my base. And this is, this is really advanced. It's very, very difficult. For your kids, so I'm not sure how many, but if your guys are flexible, I have a lot of success with this. Right? You get in here. If you're able to take the kid, a lot of you guys don't like, they'll use this as a safety blanket. They're not going to want to let this go. They won't let it go, they won't let it go, they won't let it go, and they'll get the guy turned. Lo and behold, they have him turned right there. They'll get the count one, two, three, four, but they won't, won't be able to pin him. All you got to do is teach him to step out of it. And I'm going to step out by doing a head plant step out. And I tell you, I have guys who are multiple time All-Americans who can't remember that. So you got to drill it. Other side. And this is when, I didn't really get into this because I prefer to let go of the leg, but some of our guys are very good and they like to use this leg as a safety blanket. They, they'll take them over and they'll get the back points right here. They'll adjust one, two, three, four, five. But it's very hard to pin a guy in this, in this position. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a headstand, hold on this leg tight, step out, boom. Right. But you just have to let the guys know that you can do it without getting in trouble. There's absolutely no danger 
in me doing this. Heck, you can just push the leg down. But if you don't teach them, they won't do it. And, uh, and I do have, I've got good, I've got good hip, look, hip flexibility, so it's easier said for me than, than some guys. They'll have them real tight in here. And they just don't feel like they can let them go. Head plant, boom, boom. And now I can, now I can pin them, all right? So that's if they're just going with the, uh, with the leg. What's that? I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like my guys, this is for the guys who like to hold that leg. And a lot of guys really, really like to hold that leg. And, and you know, for some people, it's great. You know, you're driving, you're driving. But this is, you're getting the more, more of the turn here by pulling the leg than by using the, your, your opposite leg. But if you get that, you can hold on to it. I like to adjust it if I can. Yeah, yeah, if I can. And you gotta be careful, because ref might, might, you gotta be careful, you keep it legal. But the other thing you can do is you can actually, you know, step in and, and lock it up, which is really, really tight. And then you can definitely pin it from here. Nice. But that's a tough position. I want to get into a little crab drill. Now, I don't teach crab rides to teach crabs so our guys do crab rides, but on the East Coast, it's like a fungus that won't go away. It's a bad case of ringworm. And uh, Gene Mills still teaches a lot of clinics and camps. And he does it all the time, and he's got kids convinced. And of course, the worst thing that ever happened was Jesse Jansen with his crab rides. So everybody and their brother thinks they can throw a crab ride. Well, unfortunately, some guys are they can. And if you don't know it, you're, you're going to get in big trouble. And we had a kid who was a four-time All-American who got beat by a kid by getting turned three times on a crab ride this year. And the kid was not even in his world, but yet he got turned three times, and so it made it a made it a tough match to come back. So, I'm going to teach a little crab ride drill because I want our guys to know the crab, feel the crab, so that they know what not to do when they get in the crab. And our first drill is to learn how to throw a crab and how to ride the man and what this man is trying to do. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, the drill is I'm going to saddle up, laces the laces once again, right here. I'm going to mount them and I'm going to hook them right there. Now, this man. He's got. A, I'm like. I'm riding a bull. I'm a, riding a bull. You got to buck me off without using your hands. All you got to do is try to whip me off by rolling, and I'm going to roll you through. And I'm going to keep his hips from touching the mat, because if his hips hit the mat, my hips are not on the mat, and he can get him. He can. I lose power. All right. So we'll show you. Hopefully now. I know I'm bigger, so it's going to be hard. It's going to be a tough drill. Hard as you can. Go. Go ahead and roll. There we go. And go, and go, go and grab me if you want to. Go and grab me. Very good, very good. All right. Much harder for Bryce, much harder for this man than me. And you'll notice the whole time I'm riding him, his hips never hit the mat. Whenever he came down, I made sure he was here. And I could roll him right through. Because here, I'm in great shape. It might not look like I'm in great shape, but Bryce can tell you, he can't, you can't do a whole lot. Right here. Right. And so what he's trying to do is get his hips to the mat. Right? And I don't want him to. You're going to do it to me. You ready? See if you can do this drill. You ready? It's harder on me than it is on you. Tighten up. You ready? You're pretty good at that. All right. So it's a, it's not easy. And do you ride crabs at all? You're not bad. Maybe you should. It's got a nice feel for it. So that's the drill, just to kind of get the man. And it takes a while because now I'm going to get better. I'm going to try to 
Then I'll let the man use his arms. And he's gonna have to keep me extended. The last thing he wants is my arms to be down here. He wants me to go for his head. So what I want this guy to do, if, he, if, I'm, if I'm doing this drill now and he starts going for my head, oh my goodness, that's where I'm gonna pin him. So he's gotta learn to keep his arms down and in good position. Right. So now you're gonna use your hands and I gotta start to fight you without, with you can use, you can use hands now. Ready, go. Gotcha. All right. So as you build up to it, you don't have to teach the guy, your team to be crab riders, but you'll start to get a feel for it and you'll understand what not to do. And it's just a heck of a conditioning drill too, because it takes a lot of effort. Not for you, but for me, okay? Now, we want to learn how to, how to turn this guy. Turn a little bit. So, you got to learn how to commit on this drill. On a crab ride, as any legs, if he's getting turned, he can't worry about hand control. He can't worry about how he's doing his survival. So if I'm going to do a crab, I got to be aggressive. I got to turn this man. All right. So now we're going to learn how to go to slip off the crab and really get the pressure. And the pressure comes from the half, not this kind of half. I've got to throw a half where I'm trying to clean his far ear out. And so teach your guys, you're going to try to get his far ear and rip his far ear off. The only way to do that is to sink your shoulder and it's, I liken it to, who was it, Kevin Dresser, who did a fantastic get up. He does a dump. Maybe you guys do some of this, this kind of dump. Well, the same principle is true in a, in a uh, crab ride. Here, I've got to get this shoulder below this shoulder. And if I'm going to do that, I've got to be willing to take some chances and take some risks. The, inside, the outside leg is going to go inside his thigh. This shoulder is going to go below his shoulder. Okay. So I'm blocking his inside thigh so he can't step into me. Step over me. Here. Right there. Now, another thing I'm doing, which you can't really see, is I don't want him stepping over my ankle. So I'm going to take this lace and I'm going to bring it right here. All right. When I bring this knee in and when I sink the shoulder deep, I'm going to do this. Oop. See how I do that? I'm blocking. Because if I don't block that ankle, he can step over me. Watch if I don't block that ankle. Now look, I'm, he's scooping me. And that's where everybody gets in trouble. Well, if you see a guy get reversed on a crab ride, I bet you if you watch a video, he doesn't do this little, this little extra technique because he's afraid. And it's all about fear. Because if I take my leg and I put it over his, I'm essentially falling to the mat. Here. But that's why I gotta take my knee first and drive it into his thigh. Right there. Right there. Now look how deep my half is. My half is incredibly deep. And I'm going for his, his, in his ear. My shoulder's to his shoulder. My hand is getting his inner, inner thigh and trying to extend him. Here, all I'm gonna try to do, ideally, I'll be able to get his hand, but Bryce has done a good job of protecting his hand. I can't get it. If he goes into, into his body, oh, that's what I want. This is the first position. Guarantee 100% of the time I'll get a pin right here. I'll bring it over my body. Look right back to the, as far back as you can, because that's going to help punch the hand. Don't look in here. Come on back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Punch. Now from here, you do not want to let his hips continue to go forward. So I, once I punch, that's all the farther I'm going to let him go. I'm pinching, see how I'm pinching his leg out? Go ahead and try to turn, Bryce. The other way. Awesome. Now I let go of the leg, hop over. Right, once again. So I'm throwing the thigh. I'm throwing the I'm dropping the shoulder. And I'm blocking his inside places. 
right here. Now, I would love it if Bryce went back for my head, and that's what a lot of guys do. They go head hunting. I reach back and try to get my head. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Right there. Where the move fails, in my, my experience, and we had a kid on our team who was good at riding guys here, but he could never turn them. And he could never turn the guy because he would, he would never commit. He would go here, here, here. He would go, he wouldn't go inside the knee with his knee. He'd just go over top of his ankle and he'd just throw a half. And he'd ride. He'd hold on to him. You know, he'd get right here. But he couldn't hit his hip through because the half wasn't deep enough. He's got to commit on it. Thigh comes in, boom! Right there it is. And this is our next drill for our guys. We're going to roll through and roll back. Ten apiece. So here it is. Punch. Fall. Roll. Punch. Whoop. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Rewind, rewind, rewind. You guys get real good at that motion, which may be a good thing, maybe a bad, maybe a bad thing. All right. When you get really, really good, you can change midstream. Turn this way. No, actually, turn this way. All right. All right. And I'll show you how I change midstream. He'll adjust to me. I'm going to change him, totally opposite direction, so he doesn't know it's coming. Falling, on, up. He stops me. He scoots scoot the hips down a little bit. Scoot him down a little bit and turn the hip the other way. Yeah, right there. Change. All right. And you'll see that a lot, guys. Will, will they'll, they'll think they go, oh, 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 I got you there, and then you'll change direction. Whoop. Come the other way. So once again, all right. sink the knee. And this is a good ride, by the way. Right here. I like to take that knee and just drive it in. There. And then when I feel it, oh, fight the hip down, opposite side, change direction. Right there. Oh. Wanna give it a try? Are you ready? You ready? Let's do it. Let's see how quickly he's learned how he's learned. Throw the throw the knee, inside knee. Oh no, gotta commit. There you go. No, no, not that far. What are you crazy? Okay. Right there. Throw the half. Block the block. when you're not blocking the ankle. You're not. There you go. There you go. Leave that knee inside. Right there. There. Oh, that hurts. Good. Punch it through. Hop over. Hop over. All right. Good. Now rewind. 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 Good. Again. Throw the knee. Don't, don't lose the half. You gotta get the half deep. Half deep. You fall your shoulder under, right there, right there, good. Good, rewind, rewind, rewind. Not bad, but gotta keep the half in there. This time, I'm gonna stop you. Change, I change you over. Now, you gotta change. Yeah, but you gotta get changed, change the crab. Change, change the crab. That's right, no, that's right, you were going back the other way. Yep. There you go, not bad, not bad. Good. So, Bryce picked it up to a certain degree in about 10 seconds and he didn't even see it. So that's not too bad. Not bad, Bryce. I'd like to add a few thoughts about the sport of amateur wrestling. I'd have to thank the uh, National Wrestling Coaches Association for all the work and effort they've been doing for the last few years. They used to be a volunteer organization. That means coaches like myself would be the president, the vice president, and of course I'm worried about winning wrestling matches and I, instead I should be also worried about the sport. And now we have actually six or seven full-time professional staff members within this organization. And that's why we've added 39 new programs in college wrestling in the last few years. And as I say that, I gotta be looking over my shoulder because there's programs that are still thinking about dropping the sport of amateur wrestling. And little do they know that there's 
thousands of kids out there. I mean, there's a million youth. There's 250,000 high school wrestlers. And then it goes to college, and you go way down to about 7,500. And then at the Olympic level, you got about 500 or less. So you can see the opportunity gets smaller as we go up, which it should be. However, we need more opportunity. And that's why I have to thank the NWCA, and I have to thank a lot of these full-time people that are working just on our sport, whether it be in Washington, D.C., or across the country. We coaches no longer can just coach our sport. We have to be concerned about our sport and make sure that we establish good relationships with the proper people within our athletic department, within the proper people nationally, to make sure that we have more college opportunities and Olympic opportunities in the future. 48 of our states right now are sanctioned at the high school level 